because I can hear myself. I feel like I just joined the same train you guys are on. There you go. All right. Mm. And we've got this. Dennis did a fantastic job. Yelzma. 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 Isn't he awesome? What a great guy. Lee English is here. Everybody's here. Austin's running camera. We got a great group of people in the audience tonight. All right. Say when, guys. Give us a countdown and let's do number 99. Three, <laughs> two, one. All right, folks, here is the 99th episode of What's Neat This Week. We got 99 models of trains <laughs> on the wall. We got uh, Denny Jelsma's coats here, or his apparel, um, his garments, as Ken likes to say. And we also have Brian Woods here uh, talking about some of his wonderful Union Pacific models and generator models here on the table. We have Chris Palomares from Athern talking about his brand new SD90 uh, M M A C H's that have just come out for delivery from Athern and uh, much more. So stay tuned. Grab your cup of coffee. Oh, we have Lee English. Let's do it. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. Additional support is provided by Athern Trains. Check out all their new monthly announcements at athern.com and by Railfan Models passionate about modeling today. Check out their website at railfanmodels.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. And by the Gateway St. Louis 2020 NMRA. Meet me in St. Louis, July 12th through the 18th, 2020. For more information on this, check out their website at www.gateway2020.org. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week, show number 99 for December 14th, 2019, guys. We're getting close to Christmas. I can feel it. It's going to snow this weekend here. Kids aren't going to have school on Monday while I'm getting this video out. But rock and roll tonight, I've got with me Mike Buddy. Hi. I've got Brian Woods sitting next to me. You know him from Rail Fan Models. He was on a show once before, right. and he's brought some really neat new stuff with him tonight. I've got James Regeer sitting over here, and James, hey. look at these beautiful cars. This is running in the December What's Neat video, showing how to do that. It's a great video. I've got Chris Palomares all the way from Champaign, Illinois, from Athern. He brought the new SD90 Max tonight, and on Skype tonight... I've got Lee English from Bowser. Lee, thank you very much for being with us this evening. Yes. And I don't have a whole lot of new news to start out with because we've got so many guests and so many new things to talk about tonight that I'm going to launch right over to Brian Woods. Brian, you just drove here five hours, and you're going to drive home five hours again tonight. Hey, but there's yeah, a right. reason on why you came here because you've got something pretty exciting to talk about this evening. Right. Since the last time I was here, uh, what was that, uh, June or July? Um, Got several new products out. Uh, the one that broke the website, which is back up and running. Your website <laughs> shut down because <laughs> James Wright provided so much traffic. Yes. <laughs> right, yeah. uh, so the UP Lynn Nystrom, um, there's been a big uh, void, uh, I think, in the marketplace for a lot of uh, UP fans and the modeling the modern excursion cars. So the first uh, passenger car we're coming out with is the Lynn Nystrom. Uh, a lot of neat things that, that aren't being done in the industry with the car. Um, so we look forward to that coming out, and that's the first of the entire UP fleet. Uh, now that's a multi-year project uh, to do, but uh, we're trying to do justice to all of those cars, uh, the entire fleet. Uh, plus, a lot of people have Walther's cars already, you know, for the 4014, 844, mm -hmm. 3985, sure. no. and uh, so for those Walther's cars, we're also coming out with a lot of upgrade kits to make those cars look like the real cars look today. So you're making detail kits for the Walther's cars? Yes. Oh, nice. Now this Lynn Nystrom car, I looked at the bottom of it. I'm going to B-roll this. The detail, the wiring, all the cables underneath, the electrical box. There's right. so many details on this car. So wow. we're putting the uninterrupted head-in power from end to end, from you know receptacle to receptacle. Uninterrupted. So that's where they run the main power through the train? Right. That's, okay. your, that's your 480 volts uh, from all your generator cars. 
uh, you know, it's the Amtrak standard. Uh, also the air line, you know, every airline, you know, from end to end uninterrupted. So even underneath the trucks, even which wasn't done in That's brass. That's right. You've got the disc brakes underneath the so, trucks and the brake shoes on the discs. Wow. I'm showing right. that video right now. Yeah, the, and another thing you pointed out was how great it is that the roof comes off. Yes, uh, the roof's so held Dakota, on by magnets. Oh, yeah. Rick is going to have Dakota a heyday Kemp. with this. He's going to put his people <laughs> in there custom painted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do with my cars is make them user-friendly, uh, where they operate and easy to, you know, in its case, since it's a storage car, the roof comes off. You can put whatever you want in. All the doors open and close. You can put them in any position you want. Uh, other cars, we're going to model with the vestibule doors open. Uh, to my knowledge, that's never been done uh, in the industry, having select uh, vestibule doors uh, in the open position or at least with the hmm. uh, upper half uh, in the open position. Door, yeah. and, and some with the full door open, uh, which UP runs that way sometimes. Uh, so a lot of things for the years to come with just the UP Align. Uh, for the Casgro, for the heavy-duty flat car guys, still got a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, since I was here last, we've got uh, four new uh, uh, transformer loads out, a uh, couple of which I have uh, here tonight. I don't go to the transformer loads yet. Look okay. at the end diaphragms on this Lynn Nynstrom car. You said you're selling these in kits where you could buy a 10-pack, and that does 10 different passenger cars, and these are the circular rubber diaphragms right, right. right. Uh, most of all the class one railroads a lot of museums uh, have gone instead of the old plate striker diaphragms mm -hmm. have gone to these rubber tube diaphragms it's just a lot easier to maintain and, and it's just cheaper mm -hmm. uh, That's so amazing. The UP has it on every car but one which is the Art Lockman uh, so but other roads do as well I mean all the other class ones business trains uh, KCS uh, BNSF, CSX, Norfolk That's Southern, cool. they're all using the tube diaphragms. And we sell those in different colors. We sell the silver, black, and gray. So mm -hmm. that fits almost every railroad out there, uh, you know, that the base plate's in that color. So when you put it on your car, it already matches. You don't have to paint anything. That's really cool. Now, you also, we talked about the roof that comes off the top. Um, there was another thing. Oh, what are the price points? This comes in a kit, and it also comes available completely pre-built. Tell me the price right. point of each. So, so the kits uh, are at two thirty-five, and fully assembled is uh, three eighty-five. Fantastic. Uh, but with all of those, I can sell everything but the the UP decal. Um, you know, unfortunately, UP has not been issuing any new licenses, so. Uh, to stay legit, uh, like we do have a written permission from Casgro uh, on those cars. So with UP trying to honor, you know, their intellectual property, uh, the modeler is going to have to buy that decal themselves and apply that themselves. But uh, other than that, uh, the fully assembled car is what you see there. That's absolutely amazing, Brian. Now tell me about these transformers. You were just about to start talking about that and the flat car loads. Right. So the transformers, uh, you know, we're trying to come out with different loads. Um, uh, one load that I'm working on that uh, should be out in a couple of months is a gas generator load uh, for the heavy duty flat car. Um, and then for our uh, straight deck flat car that we have, uh, we've only had the uh, one generator load for right now, but we'll have uh, two or three other loads coming out, other generators and a petrochemical load for that as well. That's absolutely Aren't those uh, magnetic, if I remember yes. right? All the loads have magnets. The cars have magnets. So everything Great. just snaps right together. Yeah. Now, you've got cool. three loads on the table. You said you got a total of five different loads, right? Uh, six right now. Six loads. For just that one car. And you're mm -hmm. working close with a couple transformer companies. These are absolutely, one of these loads you told me is made of about 126 different parts or something well, to that effect. Well, that's, that's yeah. a Lynn Nystrom. It's actually about 150 dips separate individual pieces on that uh wow. this this transformer right here has 66 individual parts on it so there's a lot of intensive labor in building and creating something uh, like this and you told me these are not cast in resin neither is the passenger car that these are in fact a type of 3d printing is that right yes it, it's a, a different process most people have never heard of it's an industrial uh, process with an industrial price tag that's hmm. awesome god you got five hours to drive home tonight you're going to get wings with us before you go uh, <laughs> you might Man. talk me into it. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to you. Actually, if uh, Joshua would. Uh, I'm buying your wings. I got you covered. Now, without Go get some barbecue. Ado, that would even be better. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Lee English from Bowser all the way on the East Coast. 
And Lee, I just saw your latest ad that's running in Modern Road Hobbyist Magazine online, and that shows all of these wonderful 3D printed kits that you're coming out with, because this is something that you're waving the flag high, that these are made in the USA. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show, Lee. It's nice to have you. Well, it's nice to visit. It's a nice little show you got going. I appreciate it. So I'm, uh, I'm very excited about 3D printing for the model railroaders of the world. Uh, I think Brian's well positioned to handle a lot of the uh, large items like his passenger car. Um, and and it's, it, I think for the model railroader, not the ready to run guy, but the model railroader is gonna have an opportunity that I have not seen in my over 50 years. And uh, I've, uh, I've started, uh, I've been following 3D printing for quite a long time when it was so expensive, you didn't even think about it. And um, I found my third different type of machine now, but all mine machines are a very small footprint. And I use them, uh, I'm doing 3D printing for my CalScale brand. Mm -hmm. You know, I have different, 75 different horns. And that's all because we can 3D print the master and use that to make our rubber molds for, for uh, brass casting. And now I've actually, the machines have now gotten good enough that you don't have to do much post-processing. They just, they just make really, really nice parts. Wow. And uh, I have a very boring flat car and a very boring gondola. <laughs> and if you don't put anything in them, yeah. they just don't look very good. You know, flat cars need a load. Mm -hmm. And so do gondolas. So we just started picking some random stuff. And um, actually, it's uh, people are the first ad just came out in the magazine. And uh, we're starting to get quite a few inquiries. And I'm also going to use it in my own production. Hmm. At times, and everybody knows it, um, you go out to the real railroad and you see a cooler on the back end or you see gym bags mm -hmm. yeah, or sure. pieces That's, like that or you right. see oil cleaners and control boxes and they're specific to one road number so maybe you only need 150 or 200 pieces and if I would I would have to sell thousands of pieces now I'll just 3D, I'll 3D print a couple hundred of them. That's amazing. And uh, hmm. it is amazing. It's and not only of the, the machine I'm using is now under $500. You can get it on Amazon, hmm. but you still have to be able to draw. And in, in a program like Fusion 360, which, or I guess uh, Brian uses uh, Inventor Lite. Right. You can get these at really reasonable prices. And there's also a bunch of free programs. And, boy, you just have to have the ideas. I mean, everybody can get into it now. You can stick this in your basement. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's amazing. I love sitting I'm here so watching. I'm so excited about it. I, I wish I was 20 years yeah. younger. I didn't mean but, to walk yeah. over you. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. I, no, I was amazed at the fact that you and Brian were talking shop right before we designed the show. I hope that you guys can get your heads together and you guys can work together. That's the <laughs> way it generally is in this hobby. Whenever you go around to the trade shows, mm -hmm. I see all you guys working together. And that's the beauty of what we do. Now, for the folks out there that don't know, and there may be some because there's a lot of people that... Tell me about Bowser. You've worked with your father, and this company has got quite a heritage in the model railroad industry. Well, I, I have the distinction of never having to apply for a job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, my father, he uh, took over Bowser in 19, I guess it was 61, I believe. Yeah, that would have been mm -hmm. 61. And I was eight, and I had three, three brothers and sisters, and we were the labor force. And I uh, went to college and graduated in 75, and I took over manufacturing in 76. And that was steam engines and Pittman Motors and Cary. And we've had screw machines and CNCs. And I got the burns for the die casting the machines to show you how much fun those are. Um, pretty much uh, my dad and I 
sometimes I think we got bored, so we'd buy a new process. Um, we just have done it. I, I've been involved pretty much my whole life. Um, I say I wish I could go back to 1980 and start over. Uh, kind of winding down here. I think I'm the oldest one of this group. So uh, I've been doing it, what, 75 to now. I think it's about time I quit. Uh, but uh, I don't know what I would do. But uh, model railroading has been fun. Um, I personally am not a model railroader. Everyone makes that mistake. But I love to make model trains. I like to make molds. I like to design molds. Uh, as Brian Brian knows, drawing in 3D is wonderful. It really you you really feel like you accomplish something in a hurry, because you're actually seeing a part on a screen that you can rotate around, and and see a finished product almost right away. That's amazing. And it's uh, it's fascinating as could be. Now I'm waiting for my machine that was five hundred dollars to get to Brian's size machine which was many, many thousands, like <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. I'm waiting yeah. for the $500 machine to be a 1000 in his size. Mm -hmm. Every time sure. I've talked to you on the phone, the one thing that has impressed me very much was, Lee, how you are so on top of technology. I mean, you really know what's going on. Just the fact that you're not necessarily designing and printing out 3D models to sell, but you're printing them to create your design work for your molds and castings. It's almost like you're using the printer as a development aid. Would you say that? Oh, that when you start doing 3D, you let the drawing d decide what you're making uh, in a sense. Sure. I, um, I often work by making, a, a, like Brian said, you make a basic shape, you fit it together, and then you worry about what's on it. How, how, how the part looks is secondary because you can always do that. It's how it's how it's going to be used, and it's it's pretty fascinating. Some of the stuff that uh, that you can do and 3D print now. Here's a here's one of our newest projects that was kind of difficult. I think uh, I think Chris might know know this one. This is a this is a UP part, Brian. <laughs> this is a. Hey, look at that. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's an F unit snowplow, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. If you look close at that, if the camera will focus, and I don't shake too much, <laughs> that's a 3D printed part. That's Man. Right. That's beautiful. That's smooth. And, and if you look at that part, this would be a nightmare to make in a mold. Oh, right. All those complex curves. Especially when you need 500 yeah. pieces. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for and small actually, stuff. The way we're going to hold it together, you can see in the back, that's the coupler pocket. Oh. We actually make the coupler pocket hollow so you can slide the coupler right in. Hmm. So you don't even need a coupler pocket. Oh, well, that's amazing. Right. There, there are just some things that you can do, uh, advantages of 3D. Uh, you can do designs you could never mold. Now, injection molding is always going to have you the best finish. But it, you know, has some disadvantages as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what Lee's doing there, I mean, it's a great example of merging things and, right. you know, you can do yourself mm -hmm. that looks, you know, very close mm -hmm. to, you know, to a nice finished part. And if you want to, you could do some post-process finishing to make it look, you know, reasonably close to an injection molded right. part. Right, sure. Um, the other thing I'll jump in here, Lee, which I'm sure you'll nod your head on, is, uh, you know, 3D technology is great for making tooling. You know, uh, myself, I've uh, made a lot of all my own, almost everything other than I have a few things that are machined out of aluminum, but I do a lot of uh, 3D printed uh, tooling. So I can make parts, uh, jigs, hold parts, etc. you know, when you're putting it together. Um, you know, that's invaluable. No, the sky's the limit when it comes to, when it comes to 3D designs. And I need to step up my game in terms of 3D uh, 3D software and, and designing technology, but I've I've been amazed too uh, since since Ken hooked me up with that 3D printer. Just how many models are available online already that you can mm. just just sort of find and and you know download and print out. And it's I mean it's like you're 
I mean, to me, it's a little bit like you're sitting on the Enterprise and you're telling a replicator to create that uh, that uh, <laughs> cup of coffee or whatever that'll just print it out. Mm-hmm. It's 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 mind blowing. They haven't made that yet for food. Where's Joshua? <laughs> yeah, Joshua's right? down here tonight. I want to go to Surefire and order 3D printed, right? Uh, I know, Rack of right? ribs, you know. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just Burnt like end. that. <laughs> now I got Chris Palomares here tonight, and Chris, it looks like you got you guys just over in Champagne received the brand new pallets and pallets full of SD90 Max. Well, you know, first when I was telling you about the Big Macs coming, I think you were thinking about food initially. I was, but uh, Big Macs. Uh, no, I have a great picture of of proud Papa Matt. You know, taking yeah, delivery. I we have that. pallets yeah. and pallets of those things on yeah. our on our dock, and it man, uh, it, it it was. Gratifying to see all these things come in mm-hmm. because, you know, there's been just a, a great response to these things yeah. on the back end. We're really excited to, to bring them out, you know, in December in the same year that we announced them, too. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's, you know, you know how it is in production. It can be kind of quite a, a time span before, you know, you announce something before you actually take delivery. So uh, a major win for our manufacturers when you can announce it in, these, in the same year that you receive it. You right. Know? So Yeah. Yeah, we're excited Dude, about I it. Break in here? Yeah. Can I break in on it? Chris, don't give away secrets. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, we're, we're really excited about these locomotives coming in, road-specific detail. We uh, did some re- refinement to some of the paint and printing, some of the road numbers on, on the Union Pacific. Work really closely with soundtracks on on the specific decoder that's in there for the sound models, sure, LED lighting and all that good stuff. Uh, it it was just amazing all the different variants, even on the tank that Matt was going over uh, on our live production that we did. So we're we're really excited and we're looking forward to the next locomotive that we're going to announce. So coming soon. I know, and you can't announce it here, but that's the nice thing about this show is we get to find out about all the new stuff coming out before yep. most other people do, and I really appreciate you for doing that with us. Now, if you look around the room here, there's an awful lot of garments hanging up. Brad Joseph gave me trouble about using that word garment the other day. But the fact is, Denny Yelzmo from Yelzmo's Graphics has sent us a box full of products. We've got jackets and shirts. I'm not even wearing the traditional What's Neat This Week sport coat tonight, one of the two of them that I have, but I'm wearing an actual shirt that's got our logos on it, which is really kind of cool. Jackets, shirts, baseball caps on the table, all kinds of really cool apparel that you can look up and see by going to Denny's website. That's yelzmos.com. Check it out, guys. And I'm showing you the page right now. And these are all embroidered, too, right? Like, they're not screen print. They're embroidered, 100% is made in USA. Beautiful artwork. If you scroll through his website, and I did that a few minutes ago before we started the show, and I figured it would take a good 60 or 70 or 80 seconds to go through all the beautiful things that he makes. We just saw the Union Pacific uh, Powered by the People employee locomotive that he had done. Yeah. Some of the things that he's... The embroiders are so beautiful that you could frame this and hang this up in your layout room as art. The Canadian National, if I got to that already, it's just absolutely beautiful. The Canadian hmm. National yeah, the, the, uh, the uh, Canadian Pacific Canadian uh, line, and they had a uh, number of streamliner drum heads, just, just absolutely gorgeous. He's a yeah. great guy. He's got a great sense of business and judgment. I did not tell him to send us any of these things. He came up with all of these concepts because he knows the business. He knows what people like. And so if you check out his website, you guys can purchase your own What's Neat This Week garments. We're going to stop using Teespring, right, uh, Joshua? No more Teespring. (laughs) Now it's going to be Yelzma Graphics from now on down there in Florida. This guy is awesome. I totally trust his judgment. Yeah, and I'm just noticing, too, uh, that boxcar that we just received delivery of last week is now on a jacket. (laughs) <laughs> That's how amazing he is. He saw this box car on last week's show. And then four days later in the mail, I got the jacket. And you get swag. That's yeah. the proper term. <laughs> yeah. So not only can I go to valuetrainedusa.com and buy this box car for my favorite spouse or friend or whoever it is, but I can also buy him or her the jacket. 
I mean, rock and roll. How great is that? What did I just say? I don't know. I'll listen to that in editing. But the fact is, he's got all the bases covered. I mean, that cool. is a home run, guys. That's why I say rock and roll. We've got a new company to sport and sponsor and create graphics for us, and that is Yelzma. I met him. I met him many years ago. We got to hang out at Train Fest. It was really nice to hang out with him for a few days. Um, just a fantastic artist, and that's all I can say on that. Yeah. So check out his website and rock and roll. Rock and roll. So Mike, buddy, tell me, what have you got going on tonight? <laughs> oh, I just want to say hi to Lee uh, personally. I've been to your store for uh, decades. My wife is. Her whole family is from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. So uh, oh, okay. I went up there every summer for 30-odd years. And, uh, of course, I always came to over to Montoursville to visit your store several times. It was always the highlight of my trip, actually. <laughs> but uh, well, I hope you like my little toy store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was with you when you moved to the current location, the much bigger store. And I got to know Vern and uh, Rich Cox. I know I'd, yep. I'd like you to tell them hi for me. So. Okay. Anyway, I will. Uh, good. Yeah, I brought a couple, a couple more telephone trucks. Uh, the uh, one on the left is really just a River Point Station bucket truck with an Atlas cab uh, from the. It's a 1973 Ford cab from Atlas, and then the uh, truck on the right is uh, a lot of it is scratch built. The cab is a uh, real ride 72 Chevy cab, and uh, the. The bed is uh, Trident, but I did a lot of modifications on that, too. And then the boom is scratch-built uh, with uh, needlepoint paper, which I found at a craft store with hmm. paper with oh, little nice. holes in yeah. it. And then the bucket is made from uh, the end of a ballpoint mm -hmm. pen cap. So anyway. You'd never know, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that looks but, awesome. That's well, really amazing. Yeah, I have uh, lots and lots of photographs that I took over my... 37 year career and i notice you even company, have a so. little a little cooler or drink cooler on yes. the side and actually that's and a 3d fire printed part yeah yeah and uh yeah there's a, a lot of detail on that yeah and uh i also wanted to give a shout out to Jaden lambert he's our pal uh perry lambert his son oh okay he's nine years old and he's been having a little bit of trouble and uh so i just wanted to tell him hi and hang in there and we'll see him next summer he's going to come to uh, the rpm or the uh the national train show whichever one they're going to make it to st louis so cool cool um one other thing i wanted to tell you was there's this guy that i've been talking to on facebook named christopher hegeman and he's a he's building a layout on a ship at sea and oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I saw a picture of that it yes was, uh, <laughs> how does he, that work he retired from the navy and now he's he operates a ship supporting the navy i guess a cargo ship but he's he got this big four by eight table. I think it might even be a little bit bigger than that. And he's he's got it so it can be attached to the bulkhead if there's high seas. And uh, okay. he he has his structures and trains and everything removable and packed away. So uh, okay, good. I'm going to be following that this guy. I hope he'll send us some pictures. But Cause cool, because that's been the thing. A lot, you that's know. the thing. Like on a ship, wouldn't it be awful easy yeah. to tip the table and yeah. have it hit the steel canyon? Like yeah, <laughs> we, we can't wow. even keep the model steady on this table, and it doesn't <laughs> yeah. move. Right. 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 Yeah, you've got to put something anti-roll right. on that yeah. X-Acto knife, tape, I'm telling you. Chewing gum? You need We've active used sawdust? Used yeah. a dime? Yeah, yeah. a dime. <laughs> dime. <laughs> Stabilization. Dime. Right. Uh, so yeah. that's what that dime was Balance. for. That's yeah. what that dime was for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Now, James, you've brought these passenger cars here tonight, and these are the ones that are animated with LEDs. And yeah. And you show in the December What's Neat how you did this entire project. But you're also doing a clinic at the 2020 Gateway 2020 St. Louis NMRA National Show coming up this July 12th through the 18th in St. Louis. And Chris Palomares, I understand that you are also doing a clinic at that show. You bet. So yep. this is going to be a really good show. We had Brad... And we also had John Schindler on last week, and they described a lot of the great events that are coming up at that show. But there are so many other things that we didn't talk about. I got to go see a layout last night. Joe and Tony Pellegrino. Pellegrino. And in fact, Tony's in the audience with us tonight. We love you, Tony. <laughs> he helps uh, set up operations for layouts. He did the layout at K10 Model Train Club that we've shown many times on the show. And he also set up the operation last night. And they let me run the Amtrak train because 
There wasn't a whole lot of operation for that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this I had to get clearance that. from the dispatcher. Wise choice. Right you down those time? orders. Yeah. And you let me do that, so that was great. I just ran straight through. But you guys were actually working. <laughs> it took you guys three hours to go through all of the setup that Tony had come up with. Wow. That's cool. Joe and Tony in themselves are magnificent because it's a so father-son team. And there's nothing better than when you get to meet two people in the same family with the same passion. I mean, can you imagine the politics discussion over Turkey? It's not a problem. We also got to go see Don McReynolds' layout last week, and I'm going to show you some B-roll of this. This was a Santa Fe layout that I'm going to run in the February What's Neat at Model Road Hobbyist Magazine. That's on my list of layouts to see yet, but yeah. Don McReynolds and his son Chris, they both, the whole family has worked for the refineries on the east side over there, Shell. It was absolutely amazing to see their layout. And of course, John Schindler's layout will be running in the January What's Neat. So that's one, two, three layouts that you be, will be able to go to in St. Louis for the 2020 NMRA show. And oh, by the way, for those folks that really want to see it, you, I will also be on the open house. So those that want to come see my studio and the Outdoor Garden Railroad and the Cliff and all the other ambience that we have around here, rock and roll. That's all set up now for the 2020 NMRA show. And you can look it up by going to www.gateway2020.org. You can find all the information on the show there. It's going to be a good one this year because we are going to help work on it. We're going to help set it up. And I learned yep. an awfully lot from Train Fest on how to run a professional show. So this is going to be a good one, guys. So with that, I want to go back to Lee English at Bowser out there, Lee, and ask you, is there anything else that we need to cover tonight? Tell me about some new exciting stuff you're coming out with. What else do we have? What else do I have? <laughs> well, uh, the only thing I can tell you is it's, uh, and Chris can probably talk about this some too, is uh, getting things made in China isn't always easy. <laughs> well, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's challenges uh, to it. There's yeah. definitely challenges, and when your factory closes and you have no more production, and finding a new place is a little difficult too. Right. Yes. Luckily, I've uh, I've had some great help, and uh, we're moved and get making freight cars, but uh, making locomotives is a little bit different. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to get back into the locomotive business very soon, in the beginning of next year. But uh, other new stuff, there wasn't any reason to continue on making new stuff when I couldn't even get the old stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, right now, I, everything, every project that I ever talked about is just on hold until we can start getting a good flow of product. And other than that, I just, I'm just sold on the 3D aspect of the of the whole thing. I mm -hmm. think it's probably it's it's got so many applications for so many things um even not not even in the railroad industry but i just saw a video of a guy with a burn that they were printing skin on him. whoa wow. oh wow and uh printing actual bone parts hmm. yeah so uh, so those ribs aren't too far off happen then. big when, when they start the <laughs> Uh, they've got a little well, ways they, to they go. They do have <laughs> artificial meat, I guess, that they've that they've developed. Now, Brian Woods, I want to make sure that you give us your website where we can find these beautiful transformer cars and the Lynn Nystrom car. Railfanmodels.com. Railfanmodels.com. And this wasn't a joke. When you were on um, James Wright's uh, show the other day, uh, they had so much traffic that uh, the website went down. So hopefully I can do the same thing to you this week. Well, hopefully we've got that fixed. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, those those things that you can't control yourself. But uh, uh, we made some changes, and it seems to have done the trick. But um, if you can't get a hold of, uh, you know, the website, uh, We'll get it, you know, it shouldn't be an issue going forward. Um, but contact info is out there. I'm at, you know, select train shows throughout the year. You know, love to talk to people. And if there's things that I can produce that, that aren't in the marketplace, you know, niche products, I'm open to that. I've already got a gazillion inscalers that want the, the Casgro uh, <laughs> cars and yeah. in inscale. Yes. Yep. So while I can't promise it, I, I am going to... Uh, be seriously taking a look at can I do that car justice and in scale if it will work uh, you know I'll be doing that in in scale as well oh, neat. That's um, fabulous. so you know I'm trying to listen to what uh, the marketplace wants mm -hmm. and if I can produce it 
um, you know, do it justice, you know, then I'll do that. That's awesome, yeah. guys. How many of you guys here love that NCE power system? I don't, I don't want to make you all raise your hands, but everybody out there is raising <laughs> their hands already. Yeah. I just, look at that. That's awesome. It's a good system. There's a few. <laughs> We really appreciate the fact that it works. We used it tonight. We ran your train it's, with it tonight. It's powering the uh, it's powering these Christmas cars right now. Oh, that's the, right. Uh, You've got cab. the system yeah. that Daniel Coombs likes. What's that called? The, it's a power cab. The power the, uh, cab system. Just plug and play, pretty much. That's it. One ninety nine ninety five, I think, is what the power cab is. Or you can go yeah. with the Pro Cab, the larger system. And they've also got a system that I looked on their website. I think it's nine hundred ninety nine dollars. But what it does is you can I could run my Garden Railroad with it. It's a very large ten amp system. So yeah. it's got a a ton of power, all and, and the can, systems. And you, can you imagine? You put DCC sound in those G scale locomotives yes. with all the space you have in there. You could put a pretty sweet speaker yeah. system in there. That's yep, amazing. Sure. Just a great system. And by yeah. the way, last week I mentioned on the show that just the Pro Throttle by itself will fit in the stocking. So if you've already got a moderator out there that's already got a full-blown system and you don't know what to get them, <laughs> get them another throttle because it's the best way in the world to add another friend to the layout room. Right, Joshua? Right. So Absolutely. rock and roll on that. Guys, I think we might be coming to the end on this one. Now, next week is show number 100. And I've heard a lot of different ideas on what folks would like us to do. But I've pretty much let it up to Chris Palomares, and I'll tell you why. Oh, you're going to put the pressure on me. There is huh? no pressure, but you <laughs> will be here next week, and I look forward to that because I love it when you're here. But the fact is, this whole idea of creating this podcast to serve the model railroaders every single week and show what's new, no. show what's going on, kind of show what's happening out there, <laughs> is something that you kind of came up with for us to do, Chris. So no, it was all kudos. of our. It was it's it's all of our. He's not a effort, bragger. He know. never brags. Little, very few people know that Chris Palomares, when he was in his teens was one of the persons that actually started Fremo. In no, the no don't States. go there either. <laughs> <laughs> Chris has done a lot of great things for our hobby, and he's not dead yet. Yeah. I look forward to all the other great things that you are going to do, Chris. So well, hats, thank you, Ken. Hats I, off to you. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next uh, diorama you build. I get you to build. <laughs> We're doing a Christmas shot this week, aren't we? You bet. If we're going to do a full moon right. on the inside Christmas shot, we're going to do that this week, so we might be able to show something off later. But I can't talk about what we're shooting, so I'm going to leave that part. <laughs> but rock and roll, guys. Um, yeah. Is that it for tonight? Do we have everything covered all the way across the board? Mm. I didn't show this uh, Moloko car that I finished weathering. Jeff Meyer brought one last week. It's one of the ones we're going to auction off for charity. Oh, cool. So I'll save this till next time, and we'll talk about that. And we James Gear didn't later. talk about his four LED beacon in the locomotive yet tonight either, too. We'll do that next week as well. This one's going by very quick, and we're already past 35 minutes on this. So, guys, should I close this one out? Next sure. week is show number 100, so look forward to it. Best hobby in the world with the best people in the world around me. It doesn't get any better than this. This is a show put on by us for you, the model railroader. So with that said, let's end number 99, and let's go run some trains. Look right up. <laughs> Say hello. Nice drive. Be nice drive. Thank <laughs> you.